Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Saturday, April 27th. So we have the moon in Sagittarius all day, again, pushing us into a new truth, into a new perspective, into a new path, a quest, a adventure of hidden knowledge. We are looking to integrate our inner wisdom with our new version of self. And we are still piecing together hints and clues on what this new path, what this new mission is actually going to look like. Because we have nine different aspects taking place here today and eight of them involving the moon, we are likely still in an emotional refinement energy. We're trying to get in alignment. Of course, we have that full moon in Scorpio kind of remove the old fragmented versions of self. We kind of merged the leftover pieces back together. And now we're just trying to get a feel for things. We're still in Taurus energy. We're very present in our physical forms, but there's new information, new knowledge now piecing together within us that's going to reveal what it is that we need to do from here. With that being said, we kick the day off with the moon and Sag trining beautiful interaction with the North Node in Aries and then shortly thereafter with Mercury freshly direct. So both of them, of course, are in Aries energy. This is fire on fire action. We love fire energies because not only does it help kind of burn through the cords, the attachments that we're holding on to to the past, but it also puts us in a regenerative energy. We are popping with new sparks, new fires, new flames, new downloads of inspiration, of excitement. And of course, the North Node is trying to reveal where it is that we're going from here, the path, the plan, the strategy that we now have to take in order to pursue new wants, new needs, new desires. Mercury being direct, of course, we still need a little bit of time in order to acclimate to this particular energy, but we are stabilizing in it today. And of course, the moon is our heart space, Mercury is our head space, and they're getting along. They're on the same page. Of course, the moon in Sag has us super focused on our futuristic realms, what it is that we want to do, what we want to build, what we want to create, our goals, our visions, our dreams. And Mercury, now direct in this Aries energy, is looking for inspiration, motivation, something that we can take action upon, something that we can get focused and concentrated on that, of course, is going to be a fresh, clean slate, a new beginning, a fresh start. The moon then gets into a square with Saturn. This is definitely going to kind of knock us down a couple of pegs, give us a little bit of a reality check in a certain aspect. Again, a square creates tension and conflict because we're being faced with a choice point, with a decision point on what it is that we need to do from here. Saturn being the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles and responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations. Saturn is in this Pisces energy, trying to deconstruct the old ways of doing things, the old roles and responsibilities, the old goals, visions, dreams, and inspirations. A lot of that is attached to the old version of self and out with that, the old limiting beliefs. They're dissipating. We're starting to understand the old realm, the old reality that the old version of self has created and where it is that the new version of self needs to make some changes. So of course, this isn't going to feel good. It kind of gives us a, a somberness, a seriousness, if you will, that comes with the reality check. We just need to realize where it is that, yes, it's great to have a goal, a vision, a dream, but we also have to be very present in this present moment to understand what we have to let go of, what it is that we have to remove in order to start building towards this new goal, this vision, this dream. The moon in Sag then semi-squares Pluto. Semi-square is a mild square. So there's a little bit of tension and conflict here and things are going to get pretty intense. They always do when we are interacting with Mr. Pluto. There is a major deconstruction, major death, major ending, major closure coming into realization so that we can start fresh. We can renew ourselves. We can rejuvenate ourselves. We can rebirth ourselves, especially where this new version of self is concerned. 
However, there is this tension, this conflict really putting us in a tight squeeze. Why? Well, because the inner realm still needs to go through some major changes, some major transformations before we're going to be in alignment, before we're going to be standing in our wholeness, standing in our power. And this particular interaction is going to illuminate for us where it is that we're still confused, where it is that we're still lacking trust in the path and the plan and the strategy, where it is that we still have to kind of sit with ourselves and understand where it is that we're really lacking a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of information and details that of course we need before we can feel fully informed of the options now available to us. A very interesting dynamic popping off at 8.36 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's between Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Aries energy, and Mars, the god of war ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger in Pisces energy. So just to remind you, Venus just started a brand new cycle. She's just in this Aries energy. This is the rebirth. This is the resurrection. This is the new spark, the change of heart, the wants, needs, and desires that are now starting to get realized. While Mars, on the other hand, in Pisces energy, still trying to get emotionally, spiritually, intuitively in a alignment with a new mission, a new purpose, a new quest, if you will. Now, the interesting part is that this is the masculine and feminine energies coming together. But even more than that, the even more interesting part is we're awaiting Venus to shift into her place of power in Taurus energy here on the 29th. And we're awaiting Mars to move into his place of power in Aries energy on the 30th. Again, if you need to go back, take a listen to the April energy forecast, understand what it is that we're moving into, what these energy shifts are actually going to mean for us. I would definitely recommend you do that. This is going to be a little bit of a back and forth energy, though. We have Venus more straightforward, more direct, more blunt with her energy, with her emotions, with her affections, with her wants, needs, and desires, while Mars, typically speaking, who would usually embody those particular energies, we're not as direct in the Pisces energy. We're kind of confused. We're vague. We're all over the place. So we're trying to figure out right now the inner struggle, the power struggle, if you will, whether or not we should take a direct approach to what it is that we want, what it is that we need, what it is that we desire, or whether we should kind of step back and let some of those aspects flow towards us. Again, Venus in Aries, she's going to want to take action and make moves to pursue happiness and joy and safety and security. While Mars, who typically speaking would act that way, he wants to step back. He wants to kind of see where our intuition is leading us. So the interesting dynamic is that the inner struggle that we're likely going to have to deal with here is recognizing that it doesn't have to be either or it could be and and I think many of us need to start adopting this particular mindset where it doesn't have to be black or white we need to get comfortable with the gray and so I think that this is going to be a back and forth seesawing ebbing and flowing type of energy that could create confusion however if you adopt the approach that it doesn't have to be either or and that it should be a combination of both considering the and, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, you actually might find it easier to come to a certain decision point, to come to a certain choice point. The moon in Sag is then going to try and beautiful interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer, in this Aries energy. So again, fire on fire action. This is going to help promote the new version of self. We're starting to realize and recognize, especially from that Venus and Mars interaction, that we are definitely embodying new ways of looking at things, new ways of processing, new ways of sorting things through. And this is a huge realization where we are having a huge amount of growth, a huge amount of opportunity to boss up and adopt a different mindset, different heart space, different perspective on how it is that we are leaning into bringing this newer version of self into power. Now, of course, things are going to get sticky because the moon in Sag goes ahead and makes a very tough interaction with Uranus. Uranus, of course, the great awakener in this Taurus energy. There's likely going to be a little bit of friction 
depression, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of restlessness that kind of creeps up in us with this particular interaction, mostly because it's creating confusion. It's creating a sense of, yeah, there is an appeal of trying new, different methods, different ways of going about life and getting what it is that we want. But because it's so new and so unfamiliar, we're resisting making those particular changes. The moon is then going to make an interaction with the sun, which is always revealing a new emotional awareness. And of course, the sun shining a bright light in this Taurus energy, being very present, grounded, anchored into the physical body, into the physical environment. The moon definitely has us on a little bit of a adventure, a quest, if you will, in our emotional realm, thinking about the future self. And that's the thing is that the sun in Taurus energy doesn't want to think too far ahead, doesn't want to think too far in the past. We want to be present. We have to learn the attitude of gratitude for this present moment. We have to focus on the smaller little beauty things, especially where creature comforts are concerned. And so there's going to be illumination of where it is that, yeah, okay, we are conjuring up a vision, a goal, a dream of where it is that we would like to go from here, but we don't want to project ourselves too far into the future. That would be dividing our energy, dividing our concentration, dividing our wholeness, our completion point, and we really have to start operating from a sense of wholeness. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon interacting with Jupiter in a very tough way. Of course, Uranus is in that Taurus energy. Jupiter is in that Taurus energy. They just had their conjunction on the 20th. We're still very much in the ripple effect of that particular energy. The moon interacting with Jupiter in this way. And again, Jupiter rules over the Sag energy. So this is a very intense interaction, if I do say so myself. The moon interacting with Jupiter is kind of shifting us to not seeing the greater grander picture we're losing optimism we're losing confidence in understanding the options and opportunities for growth that we now have to actually take action upon so again this is another instance where we're all hyped up emotionally speaking moon and sag but jupiter being in the taurus energy is kind of resisting hesitating making the changes that we know that we need to make in order to align with a new path a new direction a new opportunity so there's definitely some questioning going on we are seeing a dip in our optimism in our confidence in our trust and we are really having to look inward for a little bit more clarity on where it is that we have to override the egoic programming that is keeping us in this holding pattern resisting hesitating to make the change that we know we need to make.